into a hole early, wasn't able to go to that rise and that elevated curve that she's able to throw so well for a chase. Just didn't set herself up well for success. I think she is probably chomping at the bits to get another bid here with the ball in her hand. Ready to go, first of a doubleheader, nearly filled to capacity once again at Love's Field. And first pitch over the outside edge. Kaylee Young is our plate umpire. Naomi Erdahl is down at third, and Brad Newton, the first base umpire, the senior from Chino, California, Malaysia Ochoa. A ball into strike. Ochoa, that kind of tough, gritty, as Jamie Pinkerton told us, the team mom destiny for this <laughs> Iowa State team. Yes, we asked him about some of their leaders, and he just said, you know, Ochoa is definitely one of them. They kind of look towards her for things on and off the field. Two balls and a strike. This is an Iowa State team that had success against Maxwell when she was at Oklahoma State. In fact, it beat her a couple of times, but that goes two ways. You've got a, a team with some confidence, but a pitcher that's very motivated to get a win here today. Maxwell 16 and 7 last year, 191 ERA. And so far this year, 5 and 0, oh, an ERA of 2.1. And a payoff pitch coming to the very first hitter of the afternoon. There is the seventh year head coach at Iowa State, one of three active head coaches to lead three programs to the NCAA tournament. And it's a leadoff walk issue to Ochoa. All right, you can start to see the defense connecting with Maxwell in the circle. This is what we saw last weekend when she got the start was just the, the free bat, the free bats, too many free passes early in the game. And it was on that same pitch up and out, just not a competitive miss for Maxwell. So here is Allen with an opportunity to make a difference early. And she's after that first pitch. Well, against left-handed hitting, Angelina Allen, Destiny, you mentioned just her power and presence as a whole, but specifically against left-handed pitchers, she's got a 429 average. She's only struck out once against a left-handed pitcher all season long. Leading the Big 12 with a 543 average. But it's 0-2. Allen was on the Big 12 All-Freshman team two years ago when she actually led the Cyclones in hitting, then took a dip last year, batted 228. Jamie Pinkerton said she just got off to a slow start, but then rounded back into form. She's red hot this year. Do you like hitting off left-handed pitchers from the left side? No, not your jam. <laughs> that was not my preference. <laughs> -uh. But I will say, I think um, our teammates at the time with Michelle and Kaylani oh, yeah. did not make me like that. That's, that's a fair <laughs> assessment. If you're going to face two left-handed pitchers, those are the two that you don't want to face. Yeah. And you face them all the time in practice. Yes. Yeah. So we facing, facing Kaylani Ricketts <laughs> and Michelle Gascoigne. Michelle no, Gascoigne yeah. about four times a week was not my jam. No, I can't. <laughs> it's good to sound like one year. I can't though. say it is. Another two strike pitch headed to Allen lifts this one towards shallow left center field that's kind of in the Bermuda Triangle. I think the wind blew that just a little more toward Cassidy Pickering for the first out. And speaking of wind we're still getting adjusted to the little nuances of how Love's field is going to play destiny but so far very similar to Marita Hines field of course they're set up nearly identical yeah and talking to coach Gaxo they have identified that there's a little bit of a wind tunnel that kind of comes through and, and goes blows out towards right field so just making sure that the athletes are understanding where that's at and what it's going to do when the ball's up in the air be a little bit chilly 55 degrees today Aaron just from an outfielder's perspective the biggest thing I'm noticing is the I guess the lack of foul territory as you get down into the corner, you can see the stands start to 
to come out into the field. So you lose a lot of ground when covering a high fly deep into the corners of foul territory here. That I think is gonna be the biggest adjustment for the corners. Yeah, that is a, there's a lot of space taken just from what they're used to at Marita Hines. And talking to Coach Gasso, they are not able to practice here. So it's tough for them to get acclimated to the differences on their home, new home field. One and two the count on Ashley Miner. Yeah, the Sooners are just like all the other teams that come in. You take batting practice and there's head coach Patty Gasso just almost overwhelmed at what last weekend was like for her team in their brand new home. But they still practice at Marita Hines. They hit over at Marita Hines and then take a shuttle bus over here to Love's Field for the game. As Maxwell strikes out Ashley Miner for the second out in the first. This is the location in the bite we're normally seeing out of the hand of Maxwell. You can see it starts under the letters and chases up to the eyes. It's the late break that she's used to showing when she's ahead of the count. Alicia Ranchez, the batter with Ochoa still over there at first base following her leadoff walk here in the first inning. Starting to see her hammer the zone early. Half of the battle with those pitches late in counts is how you set yourself up. I think one thing with Maxwell that we saw last weekend, she kind of struggled with the two outs, just closing out the inning. So I'd love to see her kind of get after this hitter and make sure she can shut down this inning. A little bit low, one and one to Ranches, senior, and a player that is very quiet, you know, that quiet, confident leader for Iowa State. Been the starter of the last two seasons out at shortstop. Lines this one foul. Crowd into it early. Two balls, two strikes. And there's strike three call. Back-to-back -back strikeouts to finish the inning from Max. The back injury. And Lauren Skirman, the freshman from Newark, Delaware, will get the start today against this Sooner lineup. Jamie Pinkerton told us that Skirman's numbers may not look as good as he feels like that she has pitched so far this season. Now the ratio that we always clue in on is that strikeout to walk ratio. And right now almost even. 20 strikeouts on the year, 18 free passes as a freshman, 29 innings thrown. This is an Oklahoma team that's gonna have to be patient. They're gonna have to establish the strike zone early and hit what they can they can handle. Boone fouls the 0-2 pitch into the seats down the left field line. You can kind of see over there as you were talking about, Aaron, with Angelina Allen, the way that the wall angles out. You've probably got, I'm going to say, 20 to 25 feet in foul ground on regular third base. Then it really gets pinched off toward the corner, and, and you don't have more than about five feet once you get <laughs> back there toward the bullpen. That missed a little bit outside. There you go. There's that little angle. You can kind of disappear, Destiny, back in that yeah. corner if you're not careful. Yeah, and over at Marita Hines, I'd say you have about five, 10, 15 feet maybe. So what they're used to, that's going to be a big adjustment for the corners. Boone held up. No appeal down to third base. That's a screwball that we saw called for strike one. Bouncing ball to short. Ranches cleanly over to Spellhog for the first out. I don't 
don't know about you, Destiny, but I'm still trying to make heads or tails of how these lineups are put together. Every single time I make out a scorebook, completely Chad, I don't know if you feel that way, but yeah. I'm like, it's playing Tetris with my brain. I, I pride myself on how well I know this team and how well I know this coaching staff. And I don't know that I've seen an identical lineup yet. Mm -mm. So think about trying to prepare for them. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, you're alluding to Jada Coleman back up in the number two spot yeah. here today. Yeah. We've seen Boone there. We've seen Burrito there. We've seen Jennings there. I mean, it, this has just been a revolving door of changes. When you think defensively, we've seen a couple different starts at second base and first base, but predominantly the changes have been in right and left field. And then you might as well just draw names out of a hat for the one through nine order. <laughs> you don't know what you're going to get. We did talk to Coach a little bit about second base decisions because we've seen Hodge, we've seen Torres. And in that, she mentioned that they've both performed really well, and it's just based on the opponent, which with Torres and Hodge, they bring different tools to the box. So with this, we're seeing Alina today over at second base. But, you know, with Coleman, we saw her in the six hole last weekend. We saw her in the nine hole. <laughs> I mean, she's being put in places to just turn the lineup over, but you can't go wrong. You can really just put anybody anywhere <laughs> and see the success. There's a strike call, that's a full count. Yeah, we saw that pitch called against Riley Boone and now we've seen it against Jada Coleman. If that's a pitch low and away, that's a screwball from Skirman in the circle. If that's gonna get called, that's a pitch Oklahoma is gonna have to defend. Kaylee Young behind the plate has been calling that pitch even on the other side. We saw that come through. So that is something that they're going to have to protect. See that ball later in the zone for the lefties. Ken Skirman continue to hit that spot. Smashed into left center field. Ochoa and it drops in front of Allen. And it's a standing double for Jada Coleman with one away in the first as the Sooners start the offense on this Saturday afternoon. This looked catchable to me. Yeah, I agree. And, and really good piece of hitting by Jada, seeing that ball a little bit later in the zone, sending it opposite field. But I agree, I think Allen out in left field misread that. It definitely should have been caught, and that's not something you can give up against this OU offense. Yeah, outfield playing deep, you kind of got a high sky. If you're new to that term, there's no, not a speck of clouds. It's straight blue skies. Destiny and I were both outfielders, and sometimes that can actually be kind of a perception issue. It can be very deceptive of just where is the ball? How do I best <laughs> angle myself to catch this ball? It's, it's one of those weird, weird eye tricks that your, your brain plays on you in the outfield. Rito takes this one. Do you also factor in who's at the plate? And when they swing, you assume they maybe get a <laughs> yeah, little just better automatically piece of farther. It. Yeah, I mean, that's, there's got to be something to that as well, doesn't there? Yeah, I mean, they were already playing deep, too, mm -hmm. just trying to overcorrect for what you're seeing. Rito digging in. What a start she's off to. And it may continue here. This one is back to the wall and caught at the warning track by Allen. Now Coleman's going to tag, and the relay is perfect on time. Miner applies the tag. It's a double play, and the inning is over. So the Cyclones up to the lead. She was hung out trying to see if this ball was over the wall, trying to grab an extra 60 feet and gets herself thrown out at third. That ends the inning for Oklahoma. Yeah, I think that's, you know, that's a tough read for Jada Coleman. I think she does have the speed. She if she has the right jump, she could have made that. But again, you don't want that third out to be at third base to close out that first inning when you have the momentum. It's a hard hit by Brito. But again, you've got to be smart on the base pass. Leading things off is Tiana Poole here for Iowa State and momentum for the Cyclones. I mean, you're a foot away from being down 2 nothing on a home run, and all of a sudden you're back in the dugout with a chance to come to the plate. Well, it's one of those unwritten rules, like a cardinal sin in our game is never making the last out at third base. 
And you've also got Tiari Jennings about to step into the box. And I can understand, you know, trying to draw a throw. Maybe it's not a oh, good yeah. throw and she ends up at third base anyways, but it's a tough read for Jada Coleman. I think you've got to identify that before you make that decision. Tipping your cap to Allen though in left field. Heck of a hose. Gunning out Jada Coleman. This is lined right into the glove of Tiara Jennings for the first out. Tiana Poole is retired to start the second. You know, we saw some of these just wonky decision-making errors in the base paths for Oklahoma against the loss. First loss in 71 games for OU against Louisiana. I, just an uncharacteristic outing for the Sooners. Defensive errors, base running errors, weak outs at the plate. And would you say, Destiny, that under Patty Gasso, a staple for Oklahoma has always been you do not beat yourself. Yeah. yeah. It is other teams, and, and they put pressure on other teams to make mistakes, but Oklahoma rarely, if ever, makes those mistakes to cost themselves. That's a fair ball, and it bangs off that spot where the wall juts out. Nicely played there by Pickering and able to hold Carly Spellhawk to a leadoff single. And they're going to take a look at this. Maybe Alyssa Brito's pointing down there. Let's look again. A really nice swing by Spellhog. She's able to whip the barrel around. This is a curveball, the inner hand. And I think that that's going to be fair. I don't know if that hits off the bag, but it looks to at least strike the chalk line, which would be a fair ball. You can hear the fans chirping a little bit. This was a, a hot topic in opening weekend at Love's Field was down that fair foul line. Third base side. So the home plate umpire, Kayla Young, called that a foul ball. Because we could see down at third base, Naomi Erdahl said that's fair. So it is a foul ball. And Spellhog back to do it again. One and two to count. Early Spellhog senior from Bettendorf, Iowa, all over the Cyclone record books. She is. Two runs shy of second place. Fifth year player. And after that one down in the dirt, Hansen will pick it up and throw her out. That's three strikeouts now in five outs recorded by Maxwell so far. Camille Marin, the catcher, will be the batter. Maxwell has certainly settled down after the leadoff walk to start the game to Ochoa as Marin swings right through that offering. Marin, a senior, battled some concussion issues, missed a little time this year. Was more of a rotational starter last year at catcher. And the first base umpire, Brad Newton, says, yes, that was a strike. It's 0-2 on Marin. Swing and a miss. Two strikeouts in the inning and four in the game now for Maxwell. No score. Headed to the home half of the second in Norman. Not yet, but I would like to see that get created in the batter's box with their offensive approach. Uh, we've got to see them kind of shrink the zone. We've got to see them take advantage of good pitches with Kelly Maxwell. She's going to try to get them to chase, but they've got to do something different to create some momentum and get them back in into the game. And Aaron, for Oklahoma, you say details. It's always the details, right? The devil's in the details. We didn't see those details managed against Louisiana. I think we saw a little bit of adjustment in the midweek against Commerce. But it, yeah, we've already seen one blunder on the base pass. This is a team that's known for doing the details with an airtight approach. They pride themselves on that. It's their foundation. Tiara Jennings was left standing in the on-deck circle when Iowa State produced the catch at the wall by Allen and the relay to Miner to get the double play and out of that first inning. Tiara off to another very good start. Six home runs is fourth in the Big 12. She's driven in 22 runs. 
She is one double away from second in Sooner history all time. In the air. And this will tail back toward the right fielder pool. Again, these teams still adjusting to the nuances of Love's Field. Dealing with the sun and a little bit of breeze. One away, and Kinsey Hansen will be the batter. Sooner senior catcher. Hit a couple of home runs last weekend. What a dramatic home run that she hit a week ago yesterday in the first game for the Sooners here at Love's Field. A walk-off home run in that 9-7 win over Miami of Ohio. Miami of Ohio, by the way, leads the country in home runs. But it was Kinsey Hansen's home run against them that was the decider that day. Seems to be coming in clutch pretty often. It's her middle name. I feel like we need to legally get that changed. <laughs> <laughs> we saw her do it in the final game of Marita Hines. We saw her do it in the opening day here at Love's Field. That'll just get foul. Let's look back at a week ago yesterday, the Sooners debut. And Patty Gasso's reaction in the third base coach's box, if we get to it, as she comes around. Oh, we missed it. <laughs> but it was kind of classic. Just, oh, I've seen you do this before. What a tough pitch. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> was... Wow. This one is line foul as well. It's another team. The reason why this team is so dangerous is they can hit bad pitches yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> Pitchers pitch as well. I mean, it kind of looked like it just came off her handle. Remember a year ago this time, she was just kind of getting back into the swing of things after some surgery and building her momentum as the season went along. And won the Johnny Bench Award for the National Catcher of the Year. Two balls and two strikes. Off the heel of the glove of Ranches, and Hanson will be safe at first base. Ranches went back into the hole and then handcuffed her just a bit. I'll be shocked if this isn't ruled a base hit. This one is absolutely smoked. Five, six hole. Ranches having to come across the body and kicks off the heel of the glove. That was blistered. It has been scored an error. Let's see if that gets changed at some point. But it leaves Hansen at first, and here's Pickering. Pickering, two doubles on Wednesday in the midweek against Texas A&M Commerce. Sooner scored nine runs, eight of them driven in by the freshman, Parker, and Pickering. Pickering leading the Sooners with a 458 batting average coming in. Three homers, 16 runs driven in. Destiny, you watch Pickering, and she's got a little bit of a split grip between her bottom hand and her top hand, maybe an inch or two. She grips that bat, it looks like. Yeah, I think, you know, that just gives you a little bit more barrel control. I've seen that trend up and down the lineup. Terry Jennings, Jada Coleman, Ella Parker. I don't know if this is, is that a JT Gasso special? Is this a, <laughs> that, that definitely wasn't developed yet my senior year, first year that JT entered the staff. But it seems to be a consistent approach. It works, I'll tell you. We've definitely seen the barrel control. This is an athlete too, Chad. I kept keep having to remind myself she's a freshman. I know. She doesn't play like one. And the word destiny that Patty Gasso used with us earlier this week was sponge. Yes. 
tapped off the end of the bat. Skirman will throw Pickering out, and down to second base goes Kenzie Hansen. Two down. I think we've seen that with Pickering and Parker. They're both sponges. They have absorbed so much information. They've learned from the best athletes in the world, really. Some of these seniors have just set the tone and allowed them to just learn and soak up so much information. And it's really shown in Pickering and Parker. They've done such a great job so far. And here is Parker, who homered back on Wednesday against Texas A&M Commerce. The Los Angeles native, a three-run home run. It was back on Wednesday night. Such a tough situation to step into as a freshman. You've got a senior class that knows nothing other than winning the last game of their season. That's all they know is winning titles. They've done it all every single season of their career. I can remember, Destiny, you'll relate to this. Our freshman class coming in, right? Yeah. I mean, that was a complete returning nine having played in the national championship game just the season before. It was the year of the rain game, Chad, if you can remember that, yeah. against Alabama. Mm -hmm. It's a very intimidating place to be as a freshman stepping into a seasoned roster. I mean, there's going to be 10 graduating seniors this season. That's really, that's a lot of pressure as a freshman. And these two, it doesn't phase them. They do. They just look so comfortable. They trust their talent, trust their swings. I've even seen it a little bit in Sid Sanders. Just every swing that they take is they just trust it. They swing hard. They've made the decision. It's not, they're not second guessing whether they go after that pitch or not. They go after it full force. Full count to Ella Parker. With two down and Kenzie Hansen at second. Looks like that pitch is going to be consistent. That low screwball right at the kneecaps. It's getting called. There's ball four. And a patient at bat there for Ella Parker to pass the bat to Sidney Sanders. Skirman will be successful on that corner because that's a tough pitch to hit. Especially against lefties. Yeah. I don't want to swing at that pitch. <laughs> You're going to roll that right into the exactly. shortstop. <laughs> Little conference here with Skirman, Marin, and the infield. Sooners without a hit in the inning, an error and a walk, but an opportunity here for Sid Sanders. Sanders batting 324. She had a big weekend, drove in six runs on opening weekend at Love's Field last week. It looks early, like, like Skirman has pretty good command. Looks like she's putting most everything where she wants it, Destiny. Would you agree? Yeah, I think she's. I mean, so far, she's trying to keep that ball down because you cannot miss on a pitch up as I say that. <laughs> Pool backs up near the warning track, but plenty of room to pull it in. Sooners leave two out there, and we are scoreless. The drone cam footage of beautiful new Love's Field here in Norman. Second weekend for Sooner softball to play in their brand new home. And the Big 12 Conference opener got rained out last night playing a doubleheader with Iowa State here today. 8 9 and 1 in the lineup for the Cyclones set to stand in against Kelly Maxwell. Maxwell four strikeouts with the first six outs of this game. McKenna Andrews the sophomore from Flower Mound Texas added 250 last season. Destiny, something you had talked to Coach Pinkering about, one of the questions you'd ask is, what, is, what does it take for a team like Iowa State to beat a team like Oklahoma? And he said, we can't get into a hole. We can't get behind three or four runs and expect our offense to dig ourselves out of that. we got to keep it a close game to give ourselves a shot. And right now, two innings in, I'd say they've been successful at that. Yeah, I think 
what we've seen out of Kelly Maxwell has been really good as well. And her getting ahead in the count does not put them in that situation that she's, that Coach Pinkering is wanting. Foul tip hung on to there by Hanson. And that is five strikeouts now for Maxwell. That's three in a row going back to last inning. Yeah, pitching and defense has been on for Iowa State to give them a shot. But to your point, Dust, it's the fact that they've just dug themselves in holes in the box, swinging at things out of the zone. Really fallen into the game plan of Kelly Maxwell. Wardlow tries to slash at that one. It was fun talking to Jamie Pinkerton the other day about this Oklahoma program because he's from Oklahoma. He's from Broken Arrow. He was the head coach at Tulsa. He was the head coach at Arkansas. And so he's kept an eye on this progress. But he played against Oklahoma teams. He played against them at Reeves Park <laughs> at Marita Hines Field. I love it. And now here at Loves. How cool is that? It's a full circle moment. There's and this the is a seasoned head coach. And we talked to him about that too over 30 years being in this game and the, the coaching market and just he goes I, I've had a lot of experience of what it takes to go the distance. I know the buttons to push. We talked to him in depth about this team coming back late in innings. They've had a lot of fifth inning production or later to come back in comeback fashion. Seven of its nine wins have been done that way. He said it's because of my experience as a head coach. Swing and a miss, and Maxwell is really in a groove. That is four consecutive strikeouts of Cyclone hitters. Maxwell doing a really good job getting ahead in the count and allowing herself to throw pitches that they have to chase. It's a tough pitch to lay off of as a slapper. That is six strikeouts for Maxwell in eight outs recorded so far. Back to the top of the order for Malaysia Ochoa. These two have battled in the past when Maxwell was at Oklahoma State. Maxwell getting the better of things. But Ochoa did draw a walk in her first time up today. That's really the only blemish on Maxwell's line so far since that leadoff walk. First batter of the game in Ochoa. She's been almost perfect. Eight straight with six punch outs since then. That went a little bit upstairs. The Sooner staff has been good. Last weekend was an exception. And, you know, you get back to what Coach Gasso talked about. Tight, new ballpark. You're a little bit nervous and, and just not quite as fine as you want to be in your approach or with what you wanted to get done. But other than that, I mean, you look at the numbers. They lead the Big 12 in staff earned run average. 11 shutouts as a staff. That's the second most in the country. You know what I appreciated was the honesty of Coach Gasso. She said, I think that this team felt like they had to win. It was a very overwhelming weekend with a lot of unknowns, a lot of new variables. She said, I was even overwhelmed. There was a lot going on. This one pulled to Sanders. She'll step on the bag, and Maxwell works another one, two, three inning. Scoreless headed to the last of the third. Sooners blanking UCF so far as they play their series in Orlando. UCF won 7 1 yesterday. Some new blood in the Big 12 these days. And then things are going to change again next year with Oklahoma and Texas departing. Alina Torres, the number nine batter, leading things off to the Sooners against Lauren Skirman. Lined off the glove of Spellhog, and Torres will easily beat it at first base. The Sooners will have their second hit of the day and their fourth base runner. It's a good pitch to take advantage of. She's left that just slightly up at the hip. Lena able to see that later in the zone. Spellhog almost had it. <laughs> Gloved it, flashed <laughs> the leather, almost had a heck of a grab. Avery Hodge will pinch run at first base for Torres. 
the Sooners roll the lineup over. It's a little bit of a slow start so far for the Sooner offense, Destiny. They've had some base runners out there, but haven't been able to capitalize. And it looks like Iowa State and Kate sent out the pitching coach kind of realizing that they will come out and chat about things. Yeah, I think this is a really good opportunity to get your leadoff hitter on. You've got Riley Boone coming up. She normally can start some momentum. She can get something going. Typically, you see her energy kind of shine. This is a good moment for her. Right now, just wondering if she's going to take what the defense gives her, if this is where we see some short game from Riley Boone. We know she's a true triple threat at the start of this order. Some wicked speed. We've got Hodge in to run for Alina. So some speed on first already. Saw the activity out of the bullpen down the right field line for the Cyclones. It's a, a deep pitching staff. In fact, both of these are. A lot of different ways that you could go. But you've got Jaden Ralston warming up there along with Carly Charles for the Cyclones. We'll see how much longer they allow Skirman to go. Can the Sooners capitalize? Riley Boone grounded out to the shortstop. Ranches, her first time. Slashed at that one for strike one. Rancho is kind of giving up that 5 6 hole to cover second base. One and one to Boone. Back to back seasons on the Women's College World Series All Tournament team. Piece of that one. Count rolls to one and two on Riley Boone. This is that area of the game, and Jamie Pinkerton talked with us about it. When his team has struggled, it's been the focus and making sure that mistakes don't compound themselves. Boone right back to Skirman, the backhand. Sooners do move the runner along, but one away. And Jada Coleman will bat. Jada Coleman doubled her first time up. Four doubles on the season. And then got thrown out at third base, trying to tag and advance on a fly ball to the wall in left field. It's the third time the Sooners have had a runner in scoring position in this game. So they've had a chance in each inning so far. The three time Sooner All American batting 404 on the season. That, that's a pitch that's given Oklahoma some trouble. It was the first strike on Jada Coleman. Skirman climbs the ladder, goes a little bit far, nibbles just a bit further off the plate. It's going to set up Jada to have to protect that side of the strike zone. Same location. She's going to live there, and especially until these lefties for Oklahoma make an adjustment. It's the same thing we saw against Riley Boone, a rollover ground ball. You're seeing how shaded ranches and minor are. They're giving up that middle gap because she's hounding that outside corner. This is where you got to be a high IQ hitter. You got to know what you're facing. Branches at shortstop, minor at third base, really pinching the five, six hole. I mean, look at that gap up the middle of the field. If you're Jada Coleman, you know the pitches that you're going to see. Now we do have the pitch clock and it says zero. I guess the question would be did Skirman did they get time before the clock expired. Now it's on the hitter and the catcher to both be engaged before the pitch clock says 10. And then after that it's up to the pitcher to break the glove with the ball. 
Ball four is outside. So Skirman trying to live on that outside edge. And a patient at bat there for Jada Coleman gives the Sooners runners at first and second and one down. So here's a golden chance for Brito, who flied out to the wall in left field her first time up. And batting 431 with seven home runs. That one skips into the glove of Marin, who makes a nice play. This would be one of those moments if I am Marin. I'd probably call some time here. Take a second to slow down the game, to realize this is a pivotal moment for Oklahoma, a less than two out opportunity, one of the most dangerous hitters in this lineup. And there's a base hit to right field. We shall see Torres. Or I should say Hodge is waved around third. She's safe. The throw to third. Jada Coleman slid and popped back up to get engaged in the rundown. She still hasn't been. She went out of the baseline. We see the umpire out there. Brad Newton come over and say out of the baseline. And I think they may have a look at this one. For now, it is a 1-0 Sooner lead, and we'll see about the base runners. Well, I'm going to say regardless of the call in the base path, the tag also was applied, the diving attempt back to second. A lot to unpack here. Agreed. <laughs> that was a lot. That was a lot to unpack. How about the play by Coleman sliding and avoiding the tag and getting back up to go the other way, Destiny? Yeah. That was like hitting the B button or yeah. something on a video game. I mean, she's very quick with her feet. She's able to really maneuver herself in ways that I could never, <laughs> but. So it's an RBI single for Brito. She will be at first base. And for now, that's all we know for sure. There's still some decision making here, Destiny, that I'm really worried about. We just haven't seen this from Jada Coleman if ever, two times in a game. Yeah, I, it's almost like, are, are these mistakes or is she overly aggressive right now? I, I don't necessarily yeah. agree with that, but it would have been a close play. I, I think you just, she's just got to see what's going on. I, I don't feel like she's... I think it's seeing where that ball yeah, is cut, yeah. the throw in from from right field to see if there is going to be a close play at third base. I wasn't also able to see if maybe the green light was on. Was the the arm in motion from Coach Gasso at third base? And you could see from that great view down the line from third to second, the call there with the umpire coming over to rule Jada Coleman out of the baseline. But the Sooners do take the lead. RBI single for Brito, who continues to produce. She's at first base now for Tiara Jennings, who fly to right field her first time. For, that was in the dirt, and Brito's going to take off. I was going to say, for a one nothing game, we have had a lot, as you say, to unpack so <laughs> yeah. far, Aaron. A lot to unpack. It's one of those things, too, that it's a fine line as a coach where you want your players, specifically a player like Jada Coleman, to really toe that line between aggressiveness and not aggressive. Circling this ball a bit in right is Poole, but she's able to hang with it and put it. One nothing Sooners. And Kelly Maxwell has been dominant to this point. She has retired nine straight since a leadoff walk to start the game. And in those nine straight have come six strikeouts. We spoke about Angelina Allen at the start of the game. That is the entire season last year. She had 33 hits. She's already got 38 this year. Already has nearly reached the number of doubles she had a season ago. And Destiny, she had a very good freshman campaign, was on the Big 12 All-Freshman team. And then last year, as Jamie Pinkerton said, maybe started with kind of a, a sophomore slump and then picked it up about midway through. Yeah, I think she's definitely figured it out. I think at this moment, she's the one that you want in the box. She pulls this one to Avery Hodge, who came on to run for Torres and now stays in the game to play second base for the Sooners. And she retires Allen cleanly. So Allen is 0 for 2 so far today. And that's 10 straight. Retired by Maxwell. What's she kind of locked in on so far, Aaron? To me, it's getting ahead, setting herself up for pitches that are her pitches. 
We didn't see that last weekend. She struggled with it in the midweek. And right now, the, the curveball and the rise ball are doing what they can do because of the pitches that she sets herself up before. That's half the battle with the pitcher is working in your own favor, attacking the strike zone early. Just looks like she's finally found her groove, found her rhythm. Ashley Miner, one of the six strikeout victims for Maxwell to this point. And one and one count on Miner. I think the word slump is a bad word, too. Yeah. It's a dirty word. Well, it wasn't necessarily mine. <laughs> it's Maybe like a one of those. Uh, it's a challenge. It's just sophomore challenge. Challenge, you yes. Know? Yes. Slump's a dirty word in my yeah. book. I don't know about you. I'm with you. <laughs> that one looked like it might have hit her bat after it hit the dirt, but they say fair ball. And so Miner is retired for the second out. I thought I heard two clicks. And maybe Miner was arguing that a little bit. And now they're going to ask about this. Let's look yeah. again. I heard that same thing off the foot, it looked like. Yeah, it looked uh, like it was off the toe. But I, I agree with you, Chad. It, it was like a, a double, double click there. Perhaps it hit home plate, making it a fair ball. If it hits her foot in play, she's out anyway. So it wouldn't have mattered on the throw. Nevertheless, it's an out. One more time. And yeah, maybe the instep there. <laughs> she didn't even react to it. No. That's that should have been a foul shield. ball. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This one rolled foul. Interesting little plays we've had so far. And a one nothing game with Oklahoma on top. Most important thing for the Sooners has been the way that this left hander has pitched so far. And thought strike three flipping that one back and says my bad that's on me. <laughs> I think the crowd agrees with Kenzie Hansen though I don't think they ever disagree with Kenzie Hansen. <laughs> two and two now. Kelly has done a much better job closing out these innings. I think that was something Coach Rocha was interested in, seeing her really make that adjustment this weekend from last. In the air to right, Riley Boone ranges back. It hits the base of the wall and just kind of flattens out there. It'll be a two-out double for Alicia Ranchez. And the Cyclones put the tying run in scoring position here in the fourth. That's her seventh double of the year. Opposite field, she sees this ball deep in the stance, hits it, it's exactly where it's thrown. Perfect timing on a great location. That's not a bad pitch out of the hand of Maxwell. Just well struck. And into the teeth of that wind as well, coming out of straightaway right field. So Poole has a chance to tie this game. Poole lined hard to the shortstop Tiari Jennings her first time. See batting 271 with a home run. And that'll make it 0 and 2. Yeah, this is a hitter that does well against left-handed pitching. A 429 average against lefties. Only hitting 256 against right handed arms. So she does love the left handed release. Ranch's double breaks a string of 11 straight, retired by Maxwell. That one is fouled just under the glove of Kenzie Hansen. The Cyclones have their first hit. That came up and got a piece of Kenzie Hansen as well.
that will reach the net down the right field line. What a deal to get to enjoy a doubleheader at Love's Field today. Probably going to get a little chillier when we hit the nightcap around 5 or 6 o'clock tonight. But not a cloud in the sky, a north breeze, temperature about 55 degrees. Here's something that was interesting in talking with Coach Gasso about it. We'll have to get into it, but the dugout over on the first base side for the visitors is constantly bathed in sunlight. And the home dugout over on the third base side, it's shaded and can be a little chilly over there. Oh, you benches in jackets. <laughs> a little bit cold on that side. Yeah, it's uh, windbreakers and beanies over in the Sooner dugout and sunscreen and visors in the Iowa State dugout. <laughs> It'll be completely different come May. Right back to Maxwell, turned her head and got enough of a piece of it to knock it down and get Poole. Inning over. Oklahoma leads it. One thing lead in a close one. In the first of two today, in the first of three games on the weekend between the Sooners and Cyclones. And the captain catcher, Kinsey Hansen, is in to lead off the Oklahoma fourth. She was safe on what was ruled an error on the shortstop, Ranches, back in the second. Hard hit error. Down the right field line. And over toward the bullpen. Going to be interesting with those bullpens out there in left and right field because there's the ability for fans along the rails to kind of stand above the opposing bullpen out there in right field. Might make for some interesting conversations. <laughs> A touch outside there. Skirman has lived away, though, from the Sooner hitters so far. Oklahoma with three hits. Two and two on Hanson now. Lone run of this game came on an RBI single by Alyssa Brito in the bottom of the third. Catch you leaning out over the plate trying to protect that outside edge and bust one back up inside that time to Skirman. Hit hard, oh. speared by Ranchez, who wow. pivots, fires. What a play. <laughs> wow. That's the second hot shot to Ranchez. First one was back in the second inning, a recorded, a recorded error at shortstop. And this one up the middle of the field, equally as impressive, but gets the out. Check the 180 spin. <laughs> Holy cow. Ranches didn't like being charged for the error last time, I don't think. She said, I'll take care of this myself. As Cassidy Pickering stands in. Pickering hit one back to the pitcher, Skirman. Back in the second inning. Freshman leading the Sooners in batting average at 449. 22 hits, three home runs, and she has driven in 16. Got to be impressed, though, with the way this freshman Lauren Skirman has handled things so far. I think she's done a really good job. I think she's painting the corners really well. She's making it pretty challenging for this OU offense. That one will get through as Pickering scalds this one into left center field. Sooners have had at least one base runner in every inning so far. And now the second half of the back-to-back -back freshman coming to the plate. 
You know, specifically against left-handed swingers, we've seen the wide open space. Look at all that space in the middle of the infield. Five, six hole was pinched. We talked about it when Jada Coleman was up to the plate. We saw it now against Cassidy Pickering and Pickering makes him pay. Ella Parker, who walked her first time up, stands in against Skirman. We have talked a good deal about the veteranship of both these teams. They each have 10 seniors. So you've got to replenish the rosters. And look at all these freshmen here. Pickering, Parker, and out there in the circle, Skirman for Iowa State. Parker hits this one foul. Ella Parker, the three-run home run back on Wednesday night that helped the Sooners blow open that eventual run rule win over Texas A&M Commerce. Skirman, she took some off of that, trying to keep Ella Parker off balance. And that hit her just grazed Ella Parker. And now the Sooners have runners at first and second. And Parker has walked and been hit by pitch so far today. Doing whatever it takes to get herself on base. Keeping the momentum alive for this OU offense. There's a big chance for the Sooner first baseman, Sidney Sanders. Sidney Sanders fly to right her first time. The strike comes Skirman. Can Oklahoma separate from Iowa State? Aaron able to get in front of that one and keep the runners put where they are. Lifted into right center field. The wind has got a hold of it a little bit. Back to the wall and a collision. The ball pops free. It's in play right now. Or is it gone? They call it a home run. It is gone. We got to get a look at the replay. It's a three run home run for Sidney Sanders and a 4 0 sooner lead. So the ball goes over the white line at the top of the wall and comes back into the field. It's a three run home run. Had Poole been able to keep this in the glove, this would have been a robbed home run. Well struck, this is low. She's able to throw the barrel in the outside part of the zone, hits the ball where it's pitched. Look at this attempt. If she is able to keep that in the glove, that's an out. And I gotta tell you, I don't even know. It hits a fan. I don't right even there. know if that's actually a home run. <laughs> and I think that right now is what Jamie Pinkerton is wondering. Now you'd have to get a look at it on replay to know for sure that it hit the fan and then came back in. It clearly though, here, here's the point, it clearly went over the white line, off the glove, and left the ballpark. The part that's in question for me, it's hard to tell with the glove. Take a look here of where the ball is when it has contact with the glove. I think that is on 
path to hit the top of the fence. Agreed. Hard to know with that angle, but you can see contact is made with the fan on the on the ricochet off the glove, and it bounces back into fair play. My my biggest Ooh. question is, why yeah. did they not play the ball? Right. With, it wasn't well, called. It was I, as if they knew. Yeah. I think they can see the base umpire right there signaling home run. And Jamie Pinkerton coming out of the dugout. I wonder if he will have a word, maybe get another look at this play. It all kind of goes back to understanding your new field. <laughs> Doesn't it, though? So after the review, it is a home run. It left the park, hit the fan, and at that point, it's out and a home run. So credit the umpires for getting it right in the first place. And Sidney Sanders gives the Sooners a 4-0 lead. Looks like we may have a pitching change here for the Cyclones as well. Jaden Ralston, I believe, is going to come in. So as Ralston comes in. So you often, so it's as she's battling adversity, he's going to give her a chance at this. Avery Hodge, the batter, she came on and pinch ran for Alina Torres in the third, then came on to play second base in the top half of the fourth. So this is her first plate appearance of the day. Rerun home run by Sidney Sanders to break this one open just a bit for the Sooners. One and one count. Such an interesting approach when you get to conference play because you move on from just facing a team once to facing a team three times. Managing the staff, managing your arms. Think about the, the really the depth of this pitching staff for Iowa State. Swain being their ace, a 2.07 ERA. Carly Charles really coming in behind her. We already saw Skirman in the circle. Pretty hard hit, ranches up with it and throws out Hodge for out number two. And in this case, not only are they having to play them three times, but twice in one day. Yeah. So they've really got to manage those arms appropriately. I think having Roston come in and giving her that opportunity to, you know, at least get through one round of this OU offense is going to save their arms for the next game. And the other element to that is that Saya Swain, whom you mentioned a moment ago, Aaron, has been battling a yeah. bad back, and you don't know about her availability for this. Big swing there by Riley Boone, popped up into shallow center. Who's got it? There was a collision between Andrews and Ranches, but the out is recording to show up consistently in the circle. After opening weekend, just a rough outing for her here at Love's Field and starting to find her groove on her home turf. It's good to see. She struck out Carly Spellhog back in the second. Hard hit ball off the glove of Brito, but she's got that gun for a right arm and throws out Spellhawk for the first down to the fifth. <laughs> Brito, just extremely talented with the cannon. And it just didn't phase her. She picked that up bare hand, got rid of it. You know, you don't want to drop it, but every now and then it happens and you're like, oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm going to show <laughs> off right. this arm I got. <laughs> Let it go. Here's Camille Marin. I'd love to know what her overarm mile per hour is. <laughs> because that truly, I mean, she's a heck of a fielder. She can flash the leather. She's got quick reaction time. Brick wall, right? But what really makes her an elite third baseman is her arm. Truly. Lifted. In the air toward right center, Boom back and can't get it. She'll pick it up at the base of the wall and get it back in. And Merritt will stop at first base with a one-out single for the Cyclones. The second time we've seen Riley Boone get burned in right field. What's that saying? Fool me once, 
<laughs> right? This is the second time that it's been over her head. And I, I agree with the thought, right, in the outfield is it, make them earn it, right? Make them hit it past you. Well, they've done it once. We saw the doubles, the double from Ranches in the fourth and now from, from Marin here in the fifth. But they're starting to show some pop. They're making this Oklahoma outfield be honest. I think what I've seen out of Boone too is she's still trying to understand how the wall plays. She can't really decide if she should continue to go after it or play it off the wall. And once again, the Sooners do not get to practice here at Love's Field. You can come and take a few fly balls before the game, but the practice occurs at Marita Hines Fields. You see Ireland bus pinch running for Camille Marin at first base. Two hits now for the Cyclones on the day off of Maxwell as McKenna Andrews is in. She was a strikeout victim her first time. Count moves to one and two on Andrews. State team batting 306 as a club, 23 home runs. So they've knocked it around a little bit. Their struggles have come more in the circle with a lot of young arms. Hanson having a little difficulty locating that one. As Bus was a little lackadaisical getting back to the bag. That was closer than it looked like it was going to be. Yeah, I do not think that she was expecting a throwback. And Watch Boone kind of just lobbed it in there. It didn't really. <laughs> I mean, that is a whisker away. That foot was barely down. It's two down, and here's Wardlaw. She struck out against Maxwell her first time. Two and oh to the number nine batter. And now Hanson. Out for a little conversation with Maxwell. What do you think this little talk is about, Destiny? I think, you know, she's behind in the count. That hasn't been the case for most of this game. But I think it, it's nothing to stress about. Just kind of settling in, getting comfortable. You don't want to turn this lineup back over. You want to get this third out. Just trying to slow down Maxwell. Two and a one now. Wardlaw right over the top of that one. Where Maxwell gets in trouble is when the game just starts to feel slow. Things start to really get methodical with her instead of staying in a rhythm. Paints the outside edge with that one. Whatever Kinsey had to say works. <laughs> Snap throw and they've got her as bus gets hung out to dry inning over on a caught stealing championship. Here is Jada Coleman leading things off. She's been on base twice. She doubled in the first and then walked in the third. She's had an adventurous day on the base paths. <laughs> One of four Sooners in the starting lineup batting over 400 to start the day. And that one's going to head on toward the roof. 
Love's field as loud as Patty Gasso desired it to be. The underside of the awning is metal, and it can get noisy, as we found out on opening weekend. I loved Coach Gasso's description of what she felt like the opener was. She said, it's like you buy a new house, and you invite all of your friends and relatives over for a party to celebrate, but then you're worried they might break or spill something, so you're just a little bit nervous about things. And she said that's how opening weekend felt. Yep, just a little bit uneasy. Overwhelming. They were still putting bleachers together, like, <laughs> as fans were walking into the stadium. I mean, it came down to the wire to get this place ready, open it to the public. Shout out to the crews. Yeah, absolutely. Administration. I mean, it's it was a race to the finish line. We're still not all the way through the finish line. So this is the fifth session that the gates have been open. When you go back to three days last weekend, midweek game, and then today. And you're going to be well over 20, 21,000 fans that have come through the gates so far. And in between games today, we understand they're going to get everybody out and back in. I'm sure in a very orderly fashion. <laughs> you're so positive, Chad. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we'll be up here watching it all unfold as we write our lineups in, hopefully. Just testing the event staff. Breaking in Love's field. <laughs> Full count here to Jada Coleman. She can just do so many things at the plate. Is she going to slash? Is she going to bunt? Is she going to hit it over the wall? She's so versatile. And that's why, I mean, she can be plugged into any part of this lineup as we've seen the last few weeks. Stakes three and two. Pretty similar arms between Ralston and Skirman, both up in the zone, both working away from lefty. So not a, a huge adjustment that Oklahoma is going to have to make since this pitching change. Swings through that one. A little up and away from Ralston. And she's able to strike out Coleman to start the fifth. really big out. She's able to really mix up those pitches and Jada was in there fighting, fighting stuff off. Ralston coming out on top, that's a big out. That is the first strikeout for Iowa State pitching in this game. And it brings in Brito who started the Sooner scoring with an RBI single in the third. Rito now has driven in 21 runs. Began her collegiate career at Oregon. An All-American as a Sooner last year. Third season in Norman for her. Really anchoring that infield defense these days. You think about the changes with Grace Lyons graduating and the shifting, and Tiara Jennings playing shortstop now. Sidney Sanders has played the large share of things at first base the last two years, but Brito's been the constant down there. She's a very animated athlete. She's one of those athletes that you either get fired up watching her or she just gets under your skin with the way that she moves around the box, the way she prowls on the field. I would hate to be a pitcher that faces her. She's very energetic. Were you two ones who got under the skin of the 
opposition regularly. I feel like Destiny was pretty cool. And calm. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I was. I had a little bit of that. A little edge. I yeah. had a little bit of that. Ralston trying for back to back strikeouts and did not get it with that pitch. I'm Don't. with you though. I think that's been called a strike at times, I, or at least has. very close. Well, we've seen it on the other side of the plate, right? That was a curveball that lands away from Brito, and I don't know where it missed, especially with two strikes. Yeah. Wow. Got to fight that off. Too close to take. And there's ball four, and there's Brito, as you said. That will get under your skin. <laughs> it's almost like she makes eye contact with Ross in the circle. Takes the pitch, looks out. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> spicy. Yeah. <laughs> that might get under your skin. That's spicy. I agree. But that's Brito, so I'm sure they're prepared for that. Here's Tiara Jennings. She has flied to right twice today. Right back with the strike is Ralston. Very young pitching staff when you take out Charles and Swain, who are longtime members of this Iowa State program. But you're talking a freshman. We'll see Azia Rodriguez at some point. Skirman, who started as a freshman. Ralston, just a sophomore. That's been part of the growing pains for Jamie Pinkerton. He he leaves it up to Kate Sennott. We asked a little bit about pitchers, and he said, I leave that to Kate. That That is her area. Looks like Patty Gasso is going to send in a pinch runner here for the Sooners. Maya Bland over there running for Alyssa Brito. Maya Bland, another of those Sooner freshmen from Argyle High School in Texas. This pitch a little bit outside. That's another thing that you love about Patty Gasso and this staff. Yeah, they have 10 seniors on this team, but if you're a freshman and Oklahoma has recruited you because you're a very high level player, you're going to play. You will get a chance. And we see three freshmen in there today. Bland dives in safely with a stolen base. It's kind of part of earning your stripes here, I think, at Oklahoma, too, is knowing the talent in front of you, getting an opportunity, just like Bland is here. You get put in as a pinch runner. You get the shot. You nail the opportunity. You get the rep. You take what you're given. You absorb the game and those around you like a sponge. When it's your time to get the call, you rise to the occasion. That That is exactly how this program works. My plan is now a perfect six for six in stolen bases. That leads this Sooner team. So she is in scoring position. And you got to stay plugged in at all times. Last weekend, or actually, I think this was Wednesday, the midweek game, Coach Gasso said something during a pregame interview with Chris Plank that said, if, if you're not in the game, with air quotes, if you're not in the game, I will not put you in the game. That one is smoked, but fouled by Jennings. If you're not plugged in in the dugout, if you're not connected to the situation at hand, to the energy and the momentum in the present moment, if you're not in it, you will need you will not be put in it. Period. And she's aware of that at all times, oh, isn't she, Destiny? She's got oh. eyes everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Another foul ball. Count stays full to Tiara Jennings. Kenzie Hansen waiting on deck. We'll see if Ralston can work through the heart of this Sooner lineup. In the air to left center, and Ochoa over to put that one away for the second out.
So Bland will stay put at second base and Kinsey Hansen will stand in. Oklahoma has an RBI single by Brito in the third and a three run home run by Sidney Sanders that bounced off a glove and then off a fan in the bottom of the fourth inning. Hanson's over two. She's hit it hard twice to the shortstop. Ranches today. Ranches was charged with an error once and then made a spectacular play a second time. Good pitch there. And 0 2 now to Kinsey Hansen. Great job behind the plate. Marion kind of bringing that back into the zone. She received it a little bit outside that box, but she's able to really frame that well. That one squirts away from Marin, and Bland will easily make third base. Good read by Bland. Immediately she sees the pitch out of the hand, moving away from the strike zone, and this is really all reaction time. Let's talk about being plugged into the present moment. Reads are a part of that. Wild pitch charged to Ralston, and another Sooner run now at third. Swing and a miss, though. Ralston able to fan. The Sooner senior Kinsey Hansen against Oklahoma to give himself a chance offensively. And you see the line on Maxwell so far, Destiny. Five innings, two hits, six strikeouts. Yeah, she's really done a great job in the circle, especially coming off of last weekend. I know Coach Gasso and Coach Rocha just wanted to see her make some adjustments, and I definitely think she's rise to that occasion, and she's done a really good job in the circle today. There's a strike call. Wardlaw struck out her first time, batting 365. Maxwell hits the outside edge with that one for strike two. A flare under the glove of the diving Pickering. Coleman backs up the play, but it'll be a leadoff double for Woodlaw to start the sixth inning for the Cyclones. Keep in mind a freshman Pickering playing left field. You got two outfielders up here in the booth. I think on that play I would have stayed on my feet. Yeah, you've got to keep that ball in front. That's one of those reads you just got to know off the bat. I, you appreciate the effort, but right there you know you're likely not going to glove get a glove on that ball. That's a hard ball for Jada Coleman to back the box when she made contact, and it's a leadoff double for Wardlaw. Third hit in as many innings now for Iowa State. And the Cyclones have a chance here. They roll the lineup over for Malaysia Ochoa. And then the very dangerous Angelina Allen moves to the on deck circle, the leading hitter in the Big 12. It's a good challenge for OU. We know that Iowa State can make a comeback late in the game. Nobody out, leadoff double. Seven of Iowa State's nine wins have come when they trailed in the fifth inning or later. Down four nothing in the top of the sixth this afternoon. Two and zero oh now to Ochoa. Ochoa walked to start the game, and then Maxwell retired the next eleven batters. And Ochoa. 
grounded out to Cindy Sanders at first base her next time up. Same two teams will play another one here today. They'll wrap up the series tomorrow at 1 o'clock. That's a beautiful location for Maxwell. I don't know where this miss is. Potentially just under the kneecap, but the late break on that pitch, a beautiful location. There is ball four. You know she's feeling that pitch. She's wanting that call so badly. That's the second walk of the game for Kelly Maxwell. So it brings Allen to the plate and it brings the potential tying run to the on deck circle with nobody out in the top of the sixth inning. Angelina Allen the Big 12's leading hitter at 542. She's 0 for 2 today against Maxwell. Remember Allen is leading the team in average against left handed pitching. A 429 hitter from the left side. Hard hit. Hodge goes to second base for one, and that will be the only out the Sooners get as Jennings hangs tight to the bag and is able to cut down Ochoa. Down yeah. to third base goes Wardlaw. Looks like Pinkerton is going to have a word. I, I figured this would be a review. I wondered myself if Tiare Jennings was completely on the bag once that throw was gloved. This is one of those moments, and we've seen this destiny all over the nation. I know I've seen it just in the handful of games that I've covered this season of review calls that have been pivotal in swinging momentum for a team, specifically one that's trailing in runs. If this is overturned, we've got a bases loaded less than two out opportunity here for Iowa State. I just question the decision by Hodge. I think going to first and getting that for sure out is you've got a four run lead. Your body's going towards first. I feel her momentum going to second if you complete that turn, but that's not a guaranteed out. And you're risking the chance of, of a bad throw. Tiari's having to make a tough play over at second. I would say this, and you tell me if you agree, unless they have a better angle of that, I don't know that they'll be over, able to overturn the call of out at second base. There's got to be enough evidence to overturn the call on the field. The call on the field is out at second base. And to your point, Aaron, if this is overturned, it's bases loaded and nobody out it's a big with shift. the tying run at the plate. We've seen this, personally, I have seen this in multiple games that I have called this year of the review. I've seen it a lot on challenging runners leaving early, but for some reason. It is an out confirmed. One away and runners at first and third. So Allen is at first base with Wardlaw now at third. And there's Miner. Beautiful pitch there for Maxwell. See Miners Day strike out and a ground ball back to the pitcher Maxwell in the fourth. Now Maxwell has turned and is saying something to Tiara Jennings, the shortstop.
Cyclones so far 0 for 6 with runners on base today. Looking for that breakthrough hit, but it doesn't come on that swing. That one fouled off. Maxwell went through that early start where she struck out six of the first eight. She's now gone 10 batters without a strikeout. Cyclone's seen things a little better. More consistent contact as the game moves on. And that might be why they succeed later in the game, getting a couple innings under their belt, understanding their opponent. What is Kelly throwing? What can they handle? Two and two. Miner, 281 hitter on the year with three home runs. And the count goes full. Fans growing anxious at Love's Field. Momentum growing. In the Iowa State dugouts on the first base side. Fly ball toward center field. Jada Coleman will make the catch. Wardlaw tags and cannot come home. A one hop strike fired by the All American Sooner center fielder. Two down. My heart was pumping the second that ball came off of the bat because I can remember the butterflies that I would feel as an outfielder when you've got a can of corn fly ball, your momentum is moving through the catch and you've got an opportunity to host somebody at home plate. Beautiful job. And I think a smart decision by Iowa State to stay right there at third base. Yeah, that's a double play, if not. And here's Ranches, the cleanup batting shortstop who doubled her last time up. Ranchez has also struck out against Maxwell. One and one now. Little bit outside to the shortstop. Jamie Pinkerton says, if you don't ask Ranchez a question, you will never hear from her. <laughs> Very quiet. Prefers to do her talking with her bat and her glove. We saw her make a spectacular play on a one hopper off the bat of Kinsey Hansen earlier. Strike two. Coming in hot, right at the hands. Definitely not a pitch you can work with, but if it's going to be called a strike, she may come after that location again. Ranchez stays alive with that foul ball. Maxwell's last strikeout came in the third inning. It was the second out of the third inning. And Iowa State has had a lot of traffic on the bases since then. We will see a payoff pitch. Okay. Swing and a miss, and Maxwell's seventh strikeout is her biggest of the day. As we move to the home half of the sixth inning, Cassidy Pickering leads off. Pickering 
Rounded back to the pitcher at the time. Skirman, her first time up, and then singled and scored on the three run home run by Sanders in the fourth. Four sixty average continues to lead this Oklahoma team. Jaden Ralston, the second pitcher used by the Cyclones today. Skirman went three and a third innings, gave five hits and all four runs. It's really been the lower half of this order that's had all the production for Oklahoma, and it's really started with Cassidy Pickering. She had the single back in the fourth inning, followed by that hit by pitch fellow freshman, Ella Parker, on deck. Then it was the three run bomb. And now the leadoff walk to Pickering, who's been on base twice today. So the leadoff runner aboard. Conversation to try to settle Ralston down a little bit. And this is where if you're this young Iowa State team, you want to make sure that things don't start to speed up on you. As Hannah Core comes to pinch run at first base for Pickering. And Ella Parker, who's been on base twice, stands in against Ralston. Parker walked in the second, hit by pitch, and scored on the Sanders home run in the fourth. And it's ruled a strike. They appeal down to the first base umpire, Brad Newton. Ella Parker gets rung up. Just watching Coach Gasso down in the third base box, not happy with that call. <laughs> and 0-2. Let's get another look at it. Hard to see from that vantage point. This is your look. Mm. May have been the right call. Yeah. Three pitches in and out. What a bounce back for Ralston after the walk to Pickering. She strikes out Parker. It's big out. It's almost like Parker never really got settled in this at bat. Very undecisive on some of these swings. So Skirman did not strike out a sooner batter. Ralston has fanned three since entering. And here's Sanders who has the big hit of the day, the three run home run, her fifth of the year. That occurred back in the fourth inning. On the move is Core. The throw is a little bit to the shortstop side of second base. And Core has the second sooner stolen base of the day. Those are the things you want to see when Core gets an opportunity to be the pinch runner, you get the green light to steal, you execute, just like you were talking about earlier, Aaron. You take advantage of those opportunities. Okay, off speed. That's the first time we've seen that out of the hand of Ralston. It gets her strike two on Sanders. You can plant a late seed of doubt as far as timing goes in this team. Like to me, that pitch was less about this game and more about what are we going to have to show for game two. Let's see if this team can can handle a surprise off speed because we haven't seen that in game one.
Two balls and two strikes now on Sanders. Cyclones thought they had strike three. Sanders keeps the at bat alive. It'll stay three and two on the sooner first baseman. In addition to the home run, she's also flied out to right field. That was back in the second. Pickering with a leadoff walk in the inning. Her pinch runner, Hannah Kaur, is at second base. A boom shot. Foul. <laughs> We'll do it all over again here with Sanders. The Oklahoma baseball team's also playing today. We can see the center field flags of Eldale Mitchell Park just across the way. They're playing a doubleheader with UCF to open Big 12 play. There you go. Busy time on all of these campuses right now. That is ball four. What an at bat there for Sidney Sanders. Two walks in the inning. The Sooners have a little threat going now. It's the first time we've seen two off speeds and one at bat. Honestly, the first time we've seen the off speed at all this game, and it comes twice against Sid Sanders. And now if you're Torres, now you've got a little bit of that question in the back of the mind if you're going to see something slow. You're going to have to protect that with two strikes. That, I believe, is the conversation you're seeing between <laughs> Sid Sanders and Torres right now. So indeed, Alina Torres will re-enter and hit here for Hodge. And you see Quincy Lilio becomes the pinch runner for Sanders at first base. So a pinch runner core at second, pinch runner Lilio at first, and a re-entry here with Torres. Torres singled her first time up, and then she was replaced by Avery Hodge, who grounded out to short. Looks like Torres is starting to heat up a little bit at the plate, so she'll get a crack here. And right back with a strike. Alina Torres batting 361. Mm, that one ricocheted off the mask of Marin, the catcher. That would certainly ring your bell. That, that'll buzz the tower. And, and Marin has battled concussion problems this year. Mm. So certainly great concern here for the senior from Whittier, California. Respecting Marin, able to stay in. This game's had a lot of situations. Good early test in conference play for both these teams. Torres sticks back in. 
Two strikes on her and one down. Remains to be seen whether or not Maxwell would come back out for the Sooners to pitch the seventh. Maybe some of that depends upon how the rest of this half inning goes as the count goes to two and two. <laughs> the dugout's getting fired up. Trying to generate some energy, excitement, something this inning. That's a location we've seen called all game. I don't know where it's gone. But we've seen now the Sooners get away with some very close two strike calls this inning. Saw one against Sid Sanders. She ended up drawing the walk. One hopper. Ranch is up with it. They'll get the force play and cut down Lilio for out number two. Torres will occupy first, and Accor moves to third. Sooners roll the lineup over now with two down for Riley Boone. So Riley Boone is 0 for 3 in this game. It's kind of rare for Riley. Kind of feels like she's due, doesn't <laughs> yeah. it? Yeah. That one skims the glove of Marin, but the runners will stay put. Boone grounded to short in the first, then hit one back to the pitcher, and has also popped up. Two and oh now. And Boone takes a strike. Sooner's going to try to get Torres hung up in a rundown and maybe sneak Core home. But the Cyclones go ahead and let Torres take second base. And now Patty Gasso wants to talk to Boone. It's that first and third play that you cannot get enough of. <laughs> Not a big fan of that one, Aaron. Oh, you just run it about 50 times in practice. <laughs> 50 weekly. <laughs> Kidding. Torres just trying to draw the throw. Caused some commotion for the defense. Try to get Hannah Cora a chance to score. And Boone lifts one out into shallow center field. Ochoa is there, and the inning is over. Sooners leave two stranded. Oklahoma will try to close out the opening game of this doubleheading. That's what Coach Gasso and Coach Rocha want to see out of her. They've been waiting to see this Maxwell show up with all of her stuff and be able to come out on top. Tiana Poole will lead things off 0 for 2 in this game. She's lined to short and hit one back to the pitcher, Maxwell. Poole batting 265. Over 100 pitches for Maxwell today. And 3 and 0 now to the leadoff batter, Poole.
take about 30 minutes in between games. Reset. And then the back half of this doubleheader. Ball four. And that will get Spellhawk to the plate. You can see the frustration even in the body language. Third walk of the day for Maxwell. They need three outs to end game one here and you walk the lead off the top of the seventh. It's just not the start you want to try and finish out this game. You wonder how much longer they might stay with Maxwell. By the way, Hannah Kaur is now out in left field after she came on to pinch run. It's a snap throw to first by Hanson. But it's 2 0 now to Spellhawk, who's 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a ground out. And that's Jen Rocha is out. We will see if the Sooners will change pitchers. Maxwell's been good. You see, three hits, hasn't given a run. Seven strikeouts. This looks like maybe just a little conversation. It's wild even with that line. Seven Ks, no earned runs. She's only given up a couple hits. It's still not her best stuff. That's what's wild. That's how good Kelly Maxwell can be. The line really doesn't truly express the way this game has kind of felt for Kelly. I think she would even tell you that. Two and one now on Spellhawk. Hanson has to block that one, but Poole had a good lead and is able to advance to second base. Kelly has got to be able to finish. She's got to be able to trust her stuff, trust her defense, even just keep the ball down, allow your defense to work for you. She's gotten behind in the count, these first two hitters. Bell Hawk batting 231 on the year. Cyclones looking for their first hit with a runner in scoring position today, and Spellhawk just got a piece of that one. Sooners have out hit the Cyclones. 5-3. I think the, the big hit in this game, that Sanders three-run home run. But it was oh so close. It bounced off the outfielder's glove and then off a fan. Or this game might be a little bit different. There is Sanders who... It's given the Sooners his 4 nothing lead. Popped up. This is going to stay in the field of play and in foul ground. Sanders puts away out number one. Maybe a little breathe easier out there, Destiny, for Kelly Maxwell. Yeah, I think, you know, you've got to start somewhere. You've got to get somebody out and hats off to Sydney just getting under that ball, making sure that these hitters are not given an extra opportunity to help her pitcher out. Camille Marin will be the batter. She had a base hit into right field her last time up.
One and one now. Oklahoma with 48 straight wins in the series between these teams. That pitch misses in. Both of these teams up. Uh, go ahead, Eric. I, I just remember playing the coldest game of my life in Ames, <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> you know, that that's a thing we, we <laughs> talked about with Jamie Pinkerton. They do start a little slower than other teams because they're not outside as early to get the outside work done when the season starts. It's a real thing for a lot of programs, having to travel early in season. Just trusting that the work they've done either indoors or in the weight room or in the cages is enough to get the job done because they just can't get outside on their own field. Worn out from traveling, trying to catch warmer weather to play ball. Strike three called. Maxwell has her eighth strikeout of the day. And two down. When she carves the zone, she is deadly. If she can make competitive misses, set herself up for pitchers' pitches, she is deadly. Here is McKenna Andrews, final hope for the Cyclones. Andrews is 0 for 2. By the way, congratulations to the women's basketball teams for each of these two schools. They both won their games in the Big 12 quarterfinals today in Kansas City. Oklahoma beat TCU, Iowa State able to beat Baylor. So they're moving on to the semis. Base hit into left field. Poole will stop at third as Hannah Cork comes up with it. But the Cyclones stay alive. And now the potential tying run is in the on deck circle. Runners at first and third with two down. talked about this team's ability to come back in games and they are certainly fighting back here. What's going on here? We a little equipment malfunction for the umpires. <laughs> really not sure what's going on back there. Does that have to do with the timer? It has to. Maybe. The pitch clock. Yeah, the pitch clock. So here's Wardlaw. Wardlaw doubled back in the sixth inning. Hit one underneath the glove of the diving sooner left fielder at the time, Pickering. And remember the top of the lineup over there. Ochoa has walked a couple of times. And beyond her is Allen, who leads the Big 12 in hitting. This looms as a pretty important out for Maxwell. One and one the count. Wardlaw struck out in the third before that double in the sixth inning. One and two now. Maxwell bidding for her second complete game of the year, her sixth win. And trying to give Oklahoma the Big 12 opener. Pop up, shallow left center, and caught by the racing Hannah Core. Oklahoma wins it 4 0 in the Big 12 Conference opener.